In this video, I'm going to discuss isobaric processes with ideal gases. So let's say we have an ideal gas that's enclosed in some kind of container. And let's say we have a piston that can push down onto that ideal gas. The ideal gas can also push up against the piston. So this is the, the real world physical situation that I'm talking about. Now, let's say we force this gas to have constant pressure. So we maintain the pressure inside here so that P, the pressure P, does not change throughout the entire duration of the process. That is an isobaric process. So let's break down the word isobaric. So iso means same and bar means pressure. So isobar or isobaric, that's referring to a constant pressure process. So the change in pressure, the dp, is actually equal to zero. There are no changes in the pressure. The pressure of this gas is the same for the entire duration of the isobaric process. We're also going to uh, assume that this is an ideal gas. And that's actually a very reasonable model for most gases under reasonable uh, pressures and temperatures. So this over here is the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. That's the relationship between all of these uh, state variables that we can measure at a macroscopic level. So pressure, that's the constant variable in this process. We've got volume, here N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature. So the temperature can change, the volume can change, the number of moles is fixed because this is a closed uh, container, so there's no gas leaving or entering, but pressure is constant. So this guy is constant, these two guys are definitely constant, R is by definition a constant, V and T are actually free to change. So the volume can change to adjust to keep the pressure constant, and the temperature can also change. So there can actually be heat flowing in and out, and there can be work. So work and heat are both viable ways for this system to exchange energy with the surroundings. So let's have a look at some relationships that can tell us more about what the internal energy is, what the heat is, and what the work is. So up here we got the internal energy of the gas. And delta U, which is the change in internal energy, is given by NCV delta T. So this over here is the relationship that links together the change in temperature to the change in internal energy. So if you have a tiny little change in temperature, you're going to have a direct uh, change in the internal energy. And the way that that change is actually going to be uh, conveyed from delta T to delta U is by this factor. And this CV is the specific heat capacity at constant volume. You might be thinking, why is constant volume appearing here? Aren't we dealing with a constant pressure situation? Well, the constant pressure situation is actually very clear in the heat equation. So the equation for heat is NCP delta T. This over here is the specific heat capacity for constant pressure. But why do we have a CV appearing up there? Well, I can offer you one explanation uh, involving the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics says that this delta U has to be the sum of Q and W, which is the work. But the work is actually the area under the isobar curve on the PV diagram. So here's a PV diagram, and we have an isobar plotted. So it's actually just a constant horizontal line. Why is it a horizontal line? Because every point on this line has the same value of P. That's because P is constant for an isobaric process. So this over here is our isobaric process, and V is free to change. T is also free to change. The temperature and the volume can change, but the pressure is fixed. So that's what this curve is representing. And if we take the area underneath this curve, that corresponds to the work. So the work, you can think of either as P times delta V, which is the area just based on the graphical intuition here. If this height is P, and you're, ch you're going a rectangle that has a uh, length over here of delta V, then the area of this rectangle is P times delta V. So that is the work. But we can also use the ideal gas law to relate P delta V to NR delta T, right? That's just using this relationship. P is constant, and N and R are constant. So if there's a delta V, then there has to be a delta T. And the constant that mitigates these two guys is this NR. So here you have a P, you have an NR. So this is just the ideal gas law uh, that's allowing us to translate between this expression and this expression. You might also notice a negative sign. That's by convention. So we, we take this to be a negative sign because expansion would be in this direction, but expansion would be a loss of energy because the gas has to do work on the surroundings to expand. 
compression would be this way, and a compression would be increasing the energy of the gas because you're pushing the piston down and you're adding energy to that gas. So that's why that negative sign is there. That's just a convention to ensure the sign of the work is correct. We could also use a positive sign convention and then put a minus sign somewhere else. So the minus sign is going to show up somewhere else in the first law of thermodynamics. So now let's use the first law of thermodynamics, which states that this guy is the sum of Q and W. So the only way you can change the internal energy is through heat or work. Let's add up this expression and this expression. You can see there's an N and a delta T in both of these guys. So they, you can actually factor out this R, and you can factor out this CP, and you can, this, you can uh, factor out a N delta T. So what you'll actually get is CP minus R if you add these guys. And that CP minus R is going to be multiplied by N times delta T. What is CP minus R? Well, that's actually CV. That's this expression over here. So this expression is just this guy plus that guy. That's one way of getting delta U. There's other ways to actually uh, derive that from the degrees of freedom as well. That's an alternative way to derive the expression for the change in internal energy. But one way which I've just demonstrated to you is if you take the sum of the heat and the work in this form, you can factor out the N delta T, and you, then you're just left with a CP minus R because of this minus sign, and CP minus R is CV. Or in other words, CP is CV plus R. So the heat capacity at constant pressure is equal to the heat capacity at constant volume plus a factor of R. Remember, these guys are all specific heat capacities because they're per unit of, of particles, per mole. That's why this N has to show up everywhere. So these relationships govern all the important quantities, the internal energy, the heat, and the work. And they're all related to the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. So keep in mind, this delta V is just V2 minus V1. I've shown the coordinates of V2 and V1 over here. So these, these coordinates correspond to the beginning and end point of this isobaric process. So that is an isobaric process with an ideal gas. What we've done here is we've ex examined some of the expressions that we can use to relate important quantities in thermodynamics, and we've specifically looked at the situation where the pressure is constant for an ideal gas.